Praise them. Hallelujah. What's going on in this beautiful Sunday, November 26, guys, as I check my book over here with the date in it, because time's flying by when you're having fun following Jesus. Yeah, you got the good. We cheer them. Hallelujah. We got the bad. We go, oh, not so hallelujahs. I don't have any hallelujahs in me. <laughs> and the ugly, we go, oh, no, Lord, I can't praise you. But this is the time we need to praise them, guys, in the middle of the storm. And today is the day the Lord has made. As Psalm 118, 24 says, this is the day the Lord has made. He made this day just for us. Let's rejoice. As scripture says, let's be glad in it. Praise God, guys. Let's do that for the Lord God Almighty. Let's give him praise and thanks for for uh, what we have and, 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 and don't complain about what we don't have. And we wish things were this way, but they're this way. Be they're, they're, they're that way and not this way, the way we want it, but they're that way, the way God needs it to be to fulfill that perfect plan and purpose in our lives, guys. Okay. And look, and today's a special day, you know, um, beautiful day. We got some snow outside there, you know, uh, Jesus comes into our hearts and makes our black hearts pure and as white as snow. I love the snow. I think of that all the time. Woo. How my heart heart was dirty like the ground and now the snow is covering it outside and it's pure and as white as snow and it's just beautiful guys you know um i love the snow i just love god i love everything about my lord my savior my god my creator who loves me and he gave his only begotten son he gave his life for me as a gift and that's what it's all about giving that agape love a g a p e greek word for the most amazing love you can show anybody and that's what jesus showed us at the cross guys it's ironic you know not ironic but not a coincidence either the holy spirit led me to put this on because he knew what he was going to be saying the lord knew what he was going to be giving a message and he dressed me this morning my father dresses me as well hallelujah <laughs> praise the lord guys more than i thought um the littlest gift that you give anyone, guys, and I don't care if you don't have any money, you give a compliment or your time. Time is the best gift we can give anybody, actually, because once that dial goes around the second hand, right, once it goes around, we can't go back and get those seconds back. So when you spend time, precious time of life that we all have here for a short time, it's a, the greatest gift we can give one another. Um, a wave, holding the door for someone, taking time to compliment them, to pray with them. But if you got money and you're storing it up like Vatican City does and, and the John Paul the Pope or whatever the Pope's name is, uh, Pope Francis, I believe, um, they're storing treasure up while people are starving. They're storing treasure up while people are dying of being cold or, or the heat's killing them and they have money to spare so much money. Do you have any money to spare today to give to the needy, to look around in your community, your family and friend circle to say, hey, we can help them out. Let's do it. Stacking up treasure is nice, you know, and, and it's nothing wrong with saving money. But when you obsess over that and you lose focus of people in your life and around you in your community that you see on the street corner with the sign, I'll work for food. When you overlook them because you're too busy looking at your bank account, and all the riches you have, and you lose focus of the needy and those who just needs to be shown some love some way, you know, this way, that way, or the other, then it's a problem. And this is a time of the year, you know, um, you know, they, they call it Christmas, you know, um, you know, it's a, uh, you know, I don't want to get negative, but it's a, you know, Christmas was man-made, uh, um, man-made birthday for Jesus. Nobody knows because my Bible doesn't even tell me where or where Jesus was born. We know Bethlehem, but not the date because I asked Father God a long time ago, why isn't Jesus' birthday in the Bible? He said he wanted me and all of us to celebrate, everybody to celebrate Jesus 365 days out of the year, all year round, not just one day. They push uh, Christmas, you know, it's Christ's name. And then they put mass there. The Catholics did that, you know, but that's a whole nother video, a whole nother story. Them false teachers, a cult, man-made religion cult. But they push this birthday and it's of an evil, wicked man on the 25th. But you know what? It's still nice that we see Christ's name and people recognize Christmas, even secular folks, as Jesus' birthday. And I love that. So at this time of the year, everybody's giving gifts and wrapping presents and doing this and doing that, which is fantastic. But we should be doing this all year round, not only to our family and friends, but that stranger on the corner with the sign that says, I, wor I will work for food. Praise God, guys. It's all about giving, and this is what God gives me, a giving, grateful heart to give. Me and my wife, we have a little bit. She has a little bit. Um, 
I have a little bit, we put it together, we got something. And we share that little bit of something with someone who has nothing. And that's what we all need to do is let God's love and his giving kindness heart, um, you know, his, just the give to those in need, guys. And, you know, it's all right. And it's nothing wrong with saving money and doing this. But when you got too much, it's time to share a little with someone who don't have anything when you have a lot of something. Praise God. All right. Holy Spirit, have your way. Let's get this, guys. It's coming out of the book of um, the book of Luke is what I want to go to first. Hallelujah! Holy Spirit having His way this morning, guys. Um, we got a little bit of snow flurries out there, uh, enough to cover the ground, the cars. It looks beautiful. And um, as I prepare for this video this morning, um, I'm going to go back to the book of Luke here. Um, as we prepare for the video this morning. Um, as me and my wife did this devotional, we were just thinking about, you know, we we have a little bit. And we try to share when the Lord moves us to do so. And and if you don't have no money, no gifts to give, you know, people are giving gifts at school. The kids are exchanging gifts. Um, work's uh, got little things where they ex exchange gifts, you know, and they feel really special. Let's make someone feel special today. And not just at Christmas time, but every day of the year. Let the Lord lead your way today. Holy Spirit, have your way. You're giving charge to God right now. The Lord God Almighty to work through you. To get his work and his will done through us. We are his feet, right? I ain't going to lift my feet up. It's too tough here in this little area. <laughs> his, his hands and his mouthpiece. We can do a lot with our feet to get us somewhere. To do something with our hands and speak a word with our mouth. To be that mouthpiece for God and his hands and feet. Lord, let us be that today for you and until the day you bring us home. Now, it's all about giving. And when you don't even, even when you have a little, me and my wife, you know, um, we have a little bit. But we give a lot. And then God rewards us with a lot, you know what I mean? And sometimes it ain't getting tenfold back or someone blessing us with something. It's usually right here. He makes a deposit. It's this wonderful feeling of giving when you don't have. And when you give and you sacrifice, there's a bigger, bigger, bigger reward from God in this in this vault in your heart that you feel that I feel every day and I don't care what I got I'm happy with my little cabin and my beautiful wife and my bible and the Lord's presence here with me it's all I need my riches are in the presence of God my riches is the blessing of my beautiful wife my riches are my beautiful brothers and sisters out there and yes my blessings are even the enemies that come against me because now, it's the hardest thing I have to do is pray for a man who beat and bullied my daughter and the people didn't help me till this day, but I pray for them and God rewards me. But th th this message now back in focus is about the, the widow who gave two mites, which are two copper coins. I think the least, um, like a penny would be for us today, the least, uh, the least um, uh, value of a coin, but she only had two. And the widow's two mites in the book of Luke, chapter 21, it's four verses. I'm going to read them right now. And she was giving, they were asking for money for the treasury, for the temple. Like if your church was taking a collection, you know, your local place of worship was taking a collection to make, you know, give money to buy candles or, you know, um, decorations or paint or pay the electric bill, etc. So the widow's two mites, Luke 21, and this is Jesus speaking in verse three, but here it goes. Hallelujah. Woo. He looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the treasury. Jesus was watching. And he saw also a certain poor widow putting in two mites, which are two copper coins. I, I was reading that here, and I'll read it to you out of the study note. Verse 3 says, So he said, Jesus says, Truly, I say to you that this poor widow has put in more than all. For all, the, for all these out of their abundance have put in offerings. For God, but she, out of her poverty, put in all the livelihood that she had. She gave everything. You had rich people there with big wallets, you know, whatever, you know, big, big, big uh, little, little things of money. And they only gave a little bit from a lot they had. This lady gave all she had. She didn't just give one of the mites. She gave both. Because it was for the Lord, doing the Lord's work to make the sanctuary, the temple, a better place to go worship. And they used the money to feed the hungry. I would imagine back then as the church uses money today to, to bless those doing ministry work around the world, right? Praise the Lord. Now, in the book of Acts, chapter um, 3, 6, uh, um, Peter and, Peter and um, John, 
I believe it's Peter and John. Yes, heal the lame man at the temple gates. And then Peter said, as they, they took this lame man who was um, lame from birth, and everybody knew, knew that he was crippled, you know, lame from birth, and knew that he could never walk, but they would carry him, put him in front of the temple. As people would go in to worship, you know, he would ask for alms, which are like handouts, you know, alms. You can look the word up, but pretty much asking for a handout to, uh, to help me. But they, they, they call it alms here, right? Praise the Lord. So as Peter and John walked up, here's what they said. Peter said, um, so he, he gave the man his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Um, let me go ahead and read it. Now, Peter and John went up, uh, together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour, a certain lame man from his mother's womb was carried there who laid there daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful to ask alms of those who entered the temple, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, and he asked Peter and John for alms. And fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, look at us. The guy looks, right? Wow. So he gave his, them his attention, expecting to receive from them something, right? Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him and by the right hand and lifted him up and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he leaping up, stood and walked into the, entered the temple with them, walking, leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Then they knew it was he who sat begging alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Look, when people are out here, they might be walking, they might look um, healthy, but spiritually, they're lame, they're broken down, they're disabled spiritually. And when we do a kind act of kind, some kind of act of kindness and giving someone your time just to say, hey, are you okay? Hey, do you know Jesus is your Lord and Savior? Hey, do you need a prayer? Hey, can I go to McDonald's? If you got extra cash, can I buy you something to drink or eat? A coffee and warm you up, warm your bones. Do you need hat and gloves? Do you need some shoes? Because those got holes in it. If you are able, help someone, guys. Help someone out there. Do the Lord's work. Let him work through you to make this world a brighter and better place. Because it is cold and bitter and dark here. And people are out there feeling bitter, coldness of the greediness of this world. I know I felt that for many years, man, you know, and uh, got good brothers and sisters who bless me. And I'm so grateful that they have the love of Jesus in their heart to bless us at a certain point at a certain time when we need help. They bless us because God has moved them to do so and they were obedient to do so. And thank you, brothers and sisters. You know who you are out there and thank you so much. Hallelujah to everybody. Now, uh, Monica A., Adderman from New York City, New York, New York, right? Um, sends us into the upper room. Now I'm sending it out to you. Hallelujah. Woo. And uh, here it goes, guys. It says, I've been, I've been out of work for months and expenses were mounting. When another phone call came from another, someone requesting a donation to, to a, his cause, I told him I was not in a financial position to donate to his cause. I told him, I was not in the financial position, I'm sorry, to donate the amounts he suggested. He asked, could you give anything? I replied, as soon as I am available, I have available funds, I will be sure to remember this charity. However, your exchange started, um, however, our exchange started me thinking, didn't I have anything to give? See, she didn't have the amount he was asking for. But like they always ask for twenty five dollars or something, and me and my wife would send them twelve bucks, you know, if we got it. You know what I'm saying? We we don't always send the amount they're asking for, but we send something. We give something because we got food, we got our vehicles, and and, and our tires are good, and and um, we got gas, and we got food, and we got heat, and we have a little extra, so we want to share a little extra. And do the Lord's work, and and not just to feel that reward I was talking about, but the help someone else in need. It's a special feeling when people go out of their way to help you and just bless you. You know, it's just a amount of amazing amount of love you feel in your heart when people are obedient, doing the Lord's work and giving and not always want, 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 take, 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 take. That's the thing, guys. 
anybody can, you know, uh, I was always a, a taker. Now I'm a giver and I feel so good, man. The Lord doing his work and it's him who gives. He works through me. His love works through me. Let him work through you to show love and compassion to other people in need out there. Praise the Lord. It says here, let me get back here. Holy Spirit, help me uh, refocus. Uh, Hallelujah. Got a little emotional there, guys. Hallelujah. Just keeping it real as usual. However, our exchange started me thinking, didn't I have anything to give? In the story of the widow's might, the widow gave her last two coins to charity. I didn't even have two coins to share. But I did have other ways to give. I had time, an open heart, and a desire to help others when I could. So during that period, I gave more of what I did have by helping out in the community food pantry, assisting elderly relative, an elder, a little elder, um, elderly relative, and comforting a grieving friend in whatever ways I could. See, guys, it ain't all about money all the time. It's about time, and when you take time. That's the best gift we can give one another because we can't get it back. And how are you spending your time today? And that's a question you got to ask yourself. I ask myself and my wife. We try to help out as many people as we can. And yeah, we ain't supposed to talk about it. But we're obedient to the Lord when people need help. And when we can help, we go. And we do it in the name of Jesus. And we do it for his glory, not ours. In today's scripture, Peter illustrates so beautifully that blessings shared can be worth more than all the money in the world. We always have something to give, guys. Thought for the day? Hmm, thought for the day. My wife laughs at me when I do that. I hope you're laughing too. Thought for the day. And it says, I always have something to give. If you're alive, you got something to give because God will provide some energy and some strength and words of wisdom through the Holy Spirit, His Spirit, to, to get you somewhere. And He will work through you to accomplish something that someone needs done. Or He will give you the words of wisdom to say, the words of love, the, the missing puzzle piece to their puzzle of life, to get them on their way with a smile and a, and a, and a skip in their step, right? Uh, you know what I'm saying? And uh, we always have something to give, guys, more than I thought. By giving time... It's bigger than you can imagine, bigger than any car keys to a new car, which is nice. That would be amazing, right? Wow. But us taking time when the world just walks on by you, don't care about you, and we stop and hold up and show them that agape, Jesus love, that's a gift beyond belief, man, that weighs, outweighs any money or material thing you can ever give. Our time is the best gift we can give one another. If you don't have money, Give your time to a shelter, to a food kitchen, somewhere, to someone. Take time to call them when you know they're in need of a friend. Give them a call and just listen. That's the best gift we can give one another, guys. Hallelujah. Peace be with you. I'll see you next time. Praise them. Hallelujah. <laughs>